Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host. And as you can see, we have a new appearance. We got rid of the fireplace. We've got a new blue background. And uh, we're just, uh, just upgrading a little bit. And uh, today, I just want to introduce my, my first guest, which is uh, Sid Caesar. OK, you look a little different, Sid. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> and it's Sid Seeger, Caesar Photography. Sid Caesar Photography. All right, well, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you for having me. Actually, you see this big, beautiful blue uh, behind you? And yes. And this halo over my head. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, it's there. We're actually in the green room right now, so <laughs> we can't see it, but you can. So uh, welcome to the show, and uh, uh, you're an artist. I am. I'm a photographer. A photographer. Um, I have a, a studio over, actually, in the Picker Building. Um, which is right behind Clock Tower Apartments. Oh. Um, and over the last, oh, I would say eight or nine years, um, the Picker Building has gone from primarily industrial and technical stuff um, into a little bit of an artist's building. The Picker Building. Picker now, Building. That's by where the factories are? Yeah, right in the factory area. Um, it's actually hidden right behind Clock Tower. Like, we're sandwiched between Clock Tower Apartments and the Nashville River. You know, that's funny. My dad used to have a printing business right down. If you went behind the building. Yep. It was Avard Printing. Yep. And uh, Delta Education was there. Okay. And they used to make, uh, there was a plastic uh, factory there. I used to walk out of there and burping this ungodly <laughs> smell. I'm glad they changed it into a, an apartment. And, uh, yeah. So I know exactly where you're at. Yep. That's, that's, yeah, we're tucked away uh, over in there. Yeah. Uh, who, who else is out that way? The dance, uh, um, oh, I, had, I had them on here. Anyway, dan yeah. a dance studio. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. You, uh, you, you do all different types of uh, photography? We've I do a little bit of everything. Um, I'm primarily a portrait photographer. Um, I, I just people. I'm about people. I, I love to photograph people. Not so much landscapes or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but I've always been drawn to the interaction that I can have with somebody else. Yeah. So, when, uh, when, you, when you're doing phot photography, say you're, somebody comes to you and they say, hey, listen, I'd like you to take my picture, mm -hmm. a series of pictures. What are some of the things that you, you prepare them for? What are, what are some of the typical questions you'd ask them? Um, it depends on what they're approaching me for. Um, uh, one of my niches, I work a lot with bands and musicians who come to me looking for images for publicity and promotional and press kit stuff, uh, as well as album and CD artwork, that sort of thing. Um, so when they come to me, they're, they, they, they're just looking for something that helps present themselves um, as a package. Um, so I, I kind of view that as advertising photography for them. Um, and a lot of times they don't really know what they want. They know, they sort of know what they've seen on TV. So a lot of times they'll come to me and they say, well, I want to look like Dwight Yoakam and I want to look like this band. Right. And so you have to sort of sit down. It's like, well, Dwight Yoakam looks like Dwight Yoakam and there's already Dwight Yoakam photographs out there. So right. let's, let's sort of take something that maybe we can take a, an idea of that and bring it into them and make them unique, but at the same time sort of putting them in that same feeling. So when somebody says, look, uh, just send me a picture of your headshot or something that you do something... That's what you do. You, you, yeah. you take a, and then you try to find out what, what they're looking for. You yeah, yeah. a lot of times with music, I'll, I'll listen to their music. But a lot of times, um, they're coming to me because they've seen my body of work. And they, if something is, is making them react to it in a positive way, and that might be just composition or style or something. So they come and they say, well, I don't really know what I want, but I know that I like what I see. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering what, what, if, what you can do with us in, in the way that you photograph. Um, and so it's, it's a very organic process. It's, it's a very back and forth, give and take, sort of massaging them a little bit and, and find out what they're comfortable doing. Right. Um, and then at the same time, adding in sort of my own visual stuff so that we can kind of come up with a cohesive package. Right. And, and you have your studio here, is here now. Yeah, I have a studio in the Picker Building. I've been in there since 2004. Right. So when a musician comes to you, are, are they the worst? No, not really. No, they're pretty good. There's, there's a few. Most of them um, come completely open-minded. Um, which is kind of nice because I, I view photo, making photographs as sort of a music, musician would approach writing a song where they, at, at first they have no idea what they're going to do, but they have this very faint melody. Um, for me, it's, I have a certain, there's a look or a feel that I want, and how I can get to that is just a matter of crafting it and sort of teasing it here and there and lighting right. it and all that kind of stuff. So they're usually pretty good. Every once in a while, I'll get somebody that, um, you know, they've been looking at the new Rolling Stone magazine, and that, that, I, I want this identical shot. And it's like, well, we can't do that in an identical shot, but we can sort of try to capture that same feeling that that, it, that might have. You know, I, I noticed that in, in some of your portfolio, there was one guy who wanted to look like one of the x Men. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, hey, wait, that's not uh, Jackman, right? No, that's, no, that's, that's a personal, I'm a big... Um, Video game, pop culture, anime, right. I just I love that stuff. So that was, that was a couple of summers ago, and I knew him. 
Um, and I knew how close he looked to the actor, and he he sort of wanted to be him. You know, like you he's got always, the claws coming out. Yeah, of his so fingers. like I'm a big. I just I love toys. Like I have lightsabers and I have Wolverine claws and stuff. Um, so that was I just I knew what I knew that he wanted to have that look, and I was like, you were perfect for this thing. Um, so we just coordinated our schedules, and we spent an afternoon, and, and I, it came out really really well. I have a I have a, a soft spot for video games and stuff. So I, for personal work, I've been trying to to do more of that, bringing video games to life through photography. You know. When I when I peruse through uh, Facebook or or uh, Twitter, you know somebody could actually use your help. <laughs> you know there are a lot of people that uh, you know Tracy and I uh, we we kind of look at what is she lying on the floor? You know, what is she trying to get across here? And it, it's just kind of some people could really use a little help you know? <laughs> if they want to have a professional image though if they want a, a, a corporate image mm -hmm. you can help with that too uh, yeah not I do, just with just the bands right no I do a lot of um, uh, headshot photography and I do that for corporate and business um, and I have a tendency to shoot it very clean um, I think a lot of my work is just very it's very clean and it's um, it has a very good kind of pop to it yeah I'm looking um, at some of these so black for my headshots I really love to shoot them black and white I love to keep the backgrounds really clean so that they're not distracting at all um, and for me, it's, I get in nice and close, so a lot of times in some of my work, the tops of the heads are sort of cropped off a little bit. And that's more of an intuitive thing for me, that's just the way I compose. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also getting, it's, it's a very, you're very close to them and you're very connected and you know, it's, it's eye to eye. Um, so I like to keep it really clean and, and just a good visual impression. Um, and I think that's important for people that are trying to sort of use their, you know, their faces or their identities and a lot of time that's who they're trying to project. Um, so you, you were mentioned a couple times in the Hippo. You won some awards. I have um, uh, 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 best visual artist. Um, I've been the recipient, and then I've also been the runner-up um, for a few years through them. Which now, how cool. did you get involved with that? How did you get recognized for that? What was the process? For yeah, that? <laughs> I think a lot of it is social media. Um, I'm somebody that believes uh, in sh sharing everything that I do. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times, I, every shoot that I have, it goes up just so I can show examples of people of what I'm doing. Um, and a lot of time I, I have um, behind the scenes footage of shoots that I might do. Uh, I'm big into podcasting. I have a friend that I podcast with a lot. So there's, I, I have sort of have my... What's my, podcasting? Um, it's basically just like a radio. It's like this. It's like this format, sort mm -hmm. of. Um, only it's just like a radio program. So it's just all... Okay, I'm, I'm thinking you do pictures, podcast. Podcast, in my mind, is just listening? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, a friend of mine, my friend Dave Say, um, he does a lot of time task management type things. Um, and basically, we're two independent people trying to make our livings being self-employed. You know, so a lot of that, we just talk about that. We talk about the, prat, the, you know, the pratfalls of what it's like trying to be self-employed and, and earn a living doing it. And we talk about just about anything being involved with the arts and, and, and how we're trying to survive day to day you know, without working for a company. Have you done any politicians? Um, I have, have I? No, I have not yet. Yeah. No. You know, I, I, <clears throat> there were a couple of times... <laughs> I'm a state, oh, former state rep, and you know I'd be sit, sitting there at the in, in the Capitol, and you know as you look around, you're just looking back and forth. Man, you can get some really decent candidates. <laughs> you know, some some eyes are closing, some of the looks, yeah, you know, <laughs> chewing with their mouth open, <laughs> going with the eyebrow. I mean, you could really get some really decent candid shots. I'm wondering if you couldn't sell them. As just a, sneak in. Oh, I don't want to get into the whole. You yeah, know, yeah. like sometimes they don't want that stuff photographed. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be kind of funny. I'd mentioned that to a friend of mine who does photography as well, and uh, it, uh, it would just be kind of interesting. Maybe you could uh, sell them to the papers. Yeah, make them. <laughs> or, or bribe them. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> this. I'm, I'm just kidding. So uh, now when, when you're doing photo albums for, uh, for bands, I mean, you're not actually doing the artwork. You're, you're taking real pictures. We're taking not, the images, right. yeah. Uh, and that, that, then the next step from there is either they can take it and give it to somebody that does package design, um, I have a, a background in graphic design a little bit, um, so a lot of times before I even present sort of the proof set that they get to choose the images from, I've gone ahead and I've made up little mock albums to visually give them an idea of what these images could be used for. Sometimes you give them to them and they're like, well, now what do I do with them? Like what? Um, so sometimes I'll give them little mocked up album covers so that they can get, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I can, like, so this exactly. is what it would look like as a square format image. Right. And, um, yeah. So you, you give them basically a portfolio to, to work with? Yeah, just something that so once they get it, just to sort of give them extra ideas. Do you so do that, any wildlife at all? Um, I don't. My wife does, but I don't. Yeah, I had a, a friend, uh, Nat, he, he puts on National Geographic, uh, Mr. John Prestige. <laughs> a good friend of mine lives, uh, and uh, he does a very good job with, with the wildlife. And it seems they all seem to come to his porch. Mm -hmm. He has a, a little series of things uh, from our back deck. 
and he just takes pictures of the most beautiful birds. That's great. It's like uh, the Birdman of uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> it's, uh, so you don't do that, but um, you uh, you kind of intrigue me with something else that you do, mm -hmm. um, and that's the plus the toy stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what um, is that? So my, my, the alternate half of what I do, I do a lot of commercial work with bands and headshots. Um, but um, the, the flip side of that is I do a lot of fine artwork. Um, I went to uh, the New Hampshire Institute of Art, which is a four-year fine arts um, college. So I have this fine art background. Um, and in, it's interesting in that I'm not photograph like with all the toy stuff, I still photograph toys as if they were people. Um, so I like this idea of me being a portrait photographer. I can photograph real people, and then I photograph toys to look like people. So some, somehow, something that looks like a person is always involved with whatever's in front of my camera. Right. Um, and so I had started a project back in 2004 where um, I'm a big pop, pop culture freak, and I like anime, and I like cartoons, and I like video games and stuff. Um, so I had started shooting toys um, as if they were real people, just traditional headshots, head and shoulders things, and we were blowing them up really big, and you'd walk into a gallery, and there would be these large images of faces that weren't of people, but they looked like people. Um, and over time, that turned into what I call the plastic erotica project, um, and that is toys that we've uh, shot black and white, um, but they're toys that are of a more suggest suggestive nature. PG-18? Uh, yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're, not, they're definitely not little kid stuff. Right. Um, and so they, I started getting some of these for this project, and I was, I was amazed at the sculpture quality of them um, and the, the gestural forms that these toys had. Um, and once I sort of figured out how to photograph them, it turned into this project where when you first see them, um, you're not quite sure what you're looking at. You're not quite sure if it's a real person or what. And then, yeah, I'm looking at, at some of these and I'm thinking, okay, that looks from Flashdance. Okay, it looks, <laughs> it looks like from Flashdance. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Right. Um, and it's, it's, very, it's, tr it's very tricky to the eye. You cannot tell um, that's a toy. And what's very interesting is watching the reactions of, of people and what they bring into those images. It's very fun when I have band members come in. I have some examples of these prints up in my studio. Um, and automatically, it's the first thing that they go to. Um, and then they're trying to figure out what's going on. You know, usually their first joking reaction is like, you know, who's that? How can you introduce me to her? Um, and then after a while, they'll they, You bring her out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you bring her out. And, and all of a sudden, they, you know, they're like, wait, 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 well, hold on a second. Yeah, are you okay? Um, <laughs> right. So it's interesting to watch that reaction and sort of what they place on the female form. Um, and how it, it's, it's kind of neat. What do you do with it, though? Are, are you marketing that? Or is it, is, uh, it, it's, is it's, it a genre to... Or just a, a talking piece. What, what? Um, it's been it's been more personal work. Um, so I have a gallery up in uh, Concord, um, McGowan Fine Art, uh, and I have a gallery down in Boston, NKG. Um, and so once this project was done, once I had a, a body of work that was about maybe fifteen or sixteen images, um, we had a show down in Boston, and that was sort of the unveiling. Um, and it's just for me, it's it's I get to work on it at my own pace. Um, there's not there's nothing rushing it. Um, and so once I finally got that final body of work, now I can sort of sit down and start sending these out to other galleries. And you, you brought up, uh, you know, uh, Asian uh, cartoons and, and, and whatnot, and this almost seems to be something in that genre. Yeah. That, that they would, that, that would be marketed overseas. Yeah, somewhere. and that's like all of these toys that I've been bringing in, they're all based off of um, Japanese shows, you know, cartoons and movies and stuff like that. And they're all... I'm pretty sure they're all um, age restrictive, so they're not for little kids, right. um, but they're still cartoons, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. Um, yeah. Not full blown uh, risque. If you no, not that I know. Yeah. No, no, okay, no, no. Yeah. Nothing like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, now, if, uh, if, if there's somebody local that wanted to, to get in contact with you uh, and set up a shoot, you know, what's the process? How, how do they do that? Um, I, I'm all over the web, really, um, but you can find me at um, CaesarPhotography.com. Uh, it's C-E-A-S-E-R Photography.com. Um, I have Facebook. I have Twitter. I'm on YouTube. Um, just, just Google me, kids. Like, I'm everywhere. Right. Um, and uh, an email does it or a phone call, and then we just sort of get together and figure out what you're doing. Um, uh, I do more than just bands and headshots. You know, I do um, engagement sessions, and I can do high school senior yearbook photos and stuff like that. Um, so really, it's just you know, for me, um, whenever I get calls, the first thing I always I always say is just take a look at the work, spend some time with the website. Um, you know, I have like a Flickr account which has more examples that they can look at. And what is a Flickr account? Um, for me, Flickr is uh, it's like an image dump. 
um, or it's like an image sharing website. So mm -hmm. I use that sort of as an overspill for uh, my website. I have my right. sort of top choice images on my website, and if people want to get more in depth and see you know, more from each shoot, they can click on so there. So it's a place on the internet where you can look at a lot of your... Yeah, where you can see just about everything that I've shot, right. um, and you can see them in groups. I, I sort of put them in there by job. So if you want to look at one particular band and see a, an assortment of their images, you can. So talk to me a little bit about Photoshop. Do you Photoshop stuff, or is, I, that, is that a bad word with you? It's, Photoshop is not bad. <laughs> um, I, I was trained on film, mm -hmm. um, and so Photoshop to me is like being in a dark room. Um, I have a tendency not to overprocess my stuff. I, I sort of shoot as if I was still shooting film. Um, so I do very light tweaks. Um, and then if they want me to go in and, and start doing you know, album cover design type stuff, then I can start going into that. Um, but for me, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very rigorously trained with film. So when, I, when I'm doing a, sh a session, I'm, I'm still reminding myself, pretending that I'm shooting film and I don't have a memory card. I have you know, three rolls of film and I want to make sure I get the right images within those 36 frames. You know. Um, yeah. All right, so clearly you, you do use digital, but you also use film? Or I do. Yeah, I do. I, I haven't, used digi uh, haven't used film a lot recently, um, but I've been trying to integrate that back into my sessions. Um, within a, maybe about a year ago, I, I had a, a refrigerator at my studio that's filled with film, and it's just been sitting there for almost 10 years. Yeah. And I was like, why am I not, why? Why am I not doing this? Um, so I've been slowly trying to bring it back into my sessions. Usually the, the film cameras come out right at the end of the session, once I know we've got some stuff that we can use. Why would somebody want to use film if, now that we're in the digital age? There's a look. There's a look that film has that digital has not been able to capture yet. And I, don't, I can't put it into words what it is, um, but there's just something when you look at it, there's something there that digital hasn't been able to capture. Digital to me is, is just a little too sterile still. It just feels very sterile. Films, they have a certain... Je ne sais quoi. I was going to say the word. <laughs> I didn't want to mispronounce it on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, and there's a lot of things you can do in Photoshop to sort of trick those files into looking a little more film-like. Um, oh, I was having a, a discussion, a little quick discussion with a friend of mine, John Prestige, and we were talking about how that the lightning struck the Vatican. Yeah. He says, oh, that, that had to have been Photoshop. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know, John. Everybody says it's real. But uh, you can really do some amazing things. You, it's it, it's. I can't even, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing what you can do with Photoshop. Right. Um, it's opened up everybody's creative possibilities. Um, and sometimes it can be a negative. Sometimes you can push things too far, and then it's like you need to step back a little bit and mm -hmm. take a deep breath. Um, but it's just, I mean, coming from somebody that's spent so much time in a dark room and there's only so much that you can do, um, it's incredible. I mean, I love it just from the fact that I don't have to go into smelly dark rooms anymore, and I don't have to get chemicals all over my pants, yeah. and I don't have to go outside because I get lightheaded from all the, the smells. Um, but at the same time, there's something missing, you yeah. know, that just the film has, and the ability to, to put something, an invisible image that's on a piece of paper into a developing tray and watch it magically appear. Oh, I used to watch my dad do that with the printing. When he, he, he'd take a photo, they'd have to, in order to burn a plate, yeah. You'd have to take a photo and you put it on a, in, in the solution, then you dip it in and you put in another one and you hang it with a little red light in the background. Yeah. I actually like the smell. <laughs> Back then, so I had problems when I was a kid, I guess. I don't know. No, no, no. But just it, watching it. Just, just watching it appear before magic. you, and then he burned it onto a plate, and it was, uh, it was all interesting. So, anyway, how do people get in touch with you again? Um, so, the best way is through my website, right. um, and that's at CaesarPhotography.com, and that's C E A S E R Photography.com. Um, and it has all the contact information right there. The uh, telephone is 8213812, uh, um, but it's all right on the main part of the website. Um, and, uh, and I'm in the Picker Building, which is right behind Clock Tower. So it, the doors are always open. Um, I'm usually in the studio Monday through Friday all the time. Um, so if you're in the area, you know, please stop by and say hi. You take credit card? I do. <laughs> you know what? I figured I'd ask. Right? I just learned how to. So oh, that's, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Big wow. time. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, so you heard that here first on uh, Gate City Chronicles. So thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles, and until next week, we, uh, we appreciate you watching.